Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Tucker and Crowley Report. We're part of News Now and the Belmont Journal, and Franklin Tucker is editor of the Belmontonian. Uh, Franklin, what's what's coming up this week? Well, it's a special town meeting, so everything else is uh, minuscule compared to that. Um, so it's an important uh, special town meeting. We have a number of uh, uh, um, articles that are coming forward that have been um, that people have been, been anticipating. But there's also an article that is going to have to wait till January, and that is that ar- that article is to make the uh, uh, board of appeals. A, b- a board of assessors, assessors, in, assessors into a uh, appointed um, uh, body, just as now, uh, now Franklin. Let me ask you: Why is that getting kicked till um, till uh, uh, January? Well, uh, it, the select board decided that it really deserves a lot of uh, of attention, so they're going to give it its uh, good fair share of time, so that people can decide. Uh, whether they want to move forward with this. This is the same thing that happened with the uh, treasurer, uh, the appointed treasurer. Um, and when we when the town meeting voted on that, they gave it a special time. So that's what it is. They just want, they're just making sure that people uh, get their uh, say. Okay, and we, we do have some controversial things coming up at, at special town meeting, including Franklin, isn't it true that we're likely to see all of Monday evening uh, consumed by debate about uh, uh, removing the Belmont Police Department from civil service. That's correct. It is. It is uh, pretty much uh, the uh, the uh, the town moderator uh, Mike Widmer has made is setting aside Monday, the first night of town a uh, special town meeting for the, the argument of civil service. Now, this is a uh, has been controversial since it was first. Uh, proposed a couple of years ago, or even just a year and a half ago, uh, 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 town meeting did not get a chance to debate it. It was pulled by the uh, select board at the time uh, because it didn't, they didn't feel that they had the uh, necessary votes to pass it. I, they believe uh, right now town administrator and the select board believe they have the arguments to make uh, that uh, people will support it. There's a, there's a, there is a, a vocal um, uh, uh, set of Set of res- residents and town meeting members who believe that uh, that uh, uh, there shouldn't be a change, or if there is a change, it has to be spelled out in such a way that um, it's almost as if uh, you're going to ne- negotiate a new contract for for, uh, for 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 patrol officers, which this will affect. And um, uh, but uh, it, it really is coming down to two to uh, to uh, one one person's. Um, Belief that this will help uh, um, that this will help uh, uh, the citizens. Sorry, I've got a truck. I've got a Verizon truck here, and now he's coming up the road. Get going. Okay, so let me just start where 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 I was. Uh, it it really is coming down to one person's uh, hope, and that is a uh, police chief's. Uh, James, uh, James McIsaacs. He has been promoting uh, the removal of, um, of uh, civil service since he, since he was appointed uh, a, a number of years ago. Uh, and the reason is, is because he cannot hire the people that he needs or wants on the, on, on the, um, on the police force. Right now, it, for the last number of years, we've been, uh, the town has been four uh, uh, patrol officers uh, short in the number to have a full complement of, of uh, police. Go. Oh, did he go? I'm, I'm sorry. I just got interrupted by a phone call. Oh, that's okay. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> so maybe we can edit that part out too. Um, so but let me ask you. Go ahead. Let me ask you, Franklin. So, so, um, uh, hiring has been a problem for several years, um, and um, you know so, some of the folks that are raising questions about pulling out of civil service are saying that um, you know maybe it's the salaries um, um, because the salaries are are lower than many of our peer communities for entry level police officers in Belmont and. 
Oh, well, well you, that, that will that will become a issue when the new contract, if let's say we get, let's say the town and civil, uh, uh, civil service for the police, that will become part of a negotiation with the patrolman's off with the patrolman's union and the town. And they can bring it up at that point. It's not as if this is uh, this is it, does, it can't be uh, solved. Uh, well, it also, it's also an issue of, uh, you know. There's there's a number of issues that are involved here. Number there are a number of people who, you know, want to protect the patrol officer. They don't want to give up. They they don't believe that they should give up their uh, their protections under civil service without having a w- w- without a detailed um, uh, uh, contract uh, before town meeting. So town meeting can say, oh, this is this is a good way of protecting our patrol officers. Now there are other people in town who say that's the backwards way of doing it. First, you get rid of civil service, then you go to the patrol officers, and they can decide for their own, on their own, with the town. And even the even the uh, the president of the patrol officers union, he says that he's he's okay with it. So it really is coming down to a point of where um, you know you're going to have to decide you know who you believe. You know, do you believe that uh, the uh, Jane, uh, that uh, the police chief McIsaac uh, knows what he's talking about, or he doesn't. And, you know, there has been, like, what happens if we do belong with uh, civil service? Something that uh, no other town has accepted in the last, I believe, 20 years. And, and most towns in eastern Massachusetts are, are actively trying to get rid of and are doing so. Um, and that is uh, 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 something that uh, Elizabeth Dion said uh, uh, during uh, the select board meeting, the last select board meeting. And that is, if you do keep with civil service... We really uh, the the town really has to look at a at a at a smaller uh, police force simply because we can't hire we can't hire the people that we need so we rather than having uh, a nearly fifty or forty five member pol- uh, police force we should shrink that down to thirty five and that means less pu- less public safety tra- uh, you know um, uh, service uh, also you know the things that the police do. Um, uh, be, beyond uh, public service, uh, but beyond you know, like um, traffic control, those have to be ended. You know, you know, how do you keep a person in the schools uh, if you can't keep a person you know on the streets? You know, so so I think she's saying we really have to. This is going to be a really important issue coming down in, into the future of the town. So Franklin, um, you know, one issue has been that that um, you know opponents. Um, are saying that, you know, you really haven't shown us, I mean, you haven't shown us a plan, you haven't shown us any data. And um, um, do we expect that uh, the, the town will be more forthcoming with data when, when it comes to town meeting? I think they mean keeping the, those cards close to the vest, but uh, 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 Chief McIsaac is, se- is sending out to every town meeting member um, a list of the reasons why we should be doing this. Um, uh, so, but I think on Monday and, you know, they, the, the, the select board and, um, uh, the town administration appear very confident that they can, they can move this and they can bring the facts out and people will support it. So it's going to be a very interesting Monday night. All right. So, uh, um, we've got, um, we've got that, dom- that issue dominating Monday, um, um, Probably the, um, the the next most controversial issue. Um, well, I had it right here in front of me. Um, let's see. Oh, the um, the citizens' petition for the sixty one B exemption. That's um, tell right. Tell us about that, Franklin. Well, it's 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 not that controversial. It's it, it, apparent, apparently town meeting will. Uh, what, what what I've heard is that you know, through precinct meetings, uh, that uh, many people in town believe this is a great idea. And, you know, no, the, uh, controversial the, is the wrong word. Um, <laughs> um, you, you know, but it's no, signif- noteworthy. Sig- noteworthy, that's right, because you're looking at, uh, there's w- only one property in town that ha- that uses uh, this uh, uh, state law, and which exempts uh, 75% of your uh, taxes uh, on open land, not not structures or anything like that. Um, and that is the Belmont Country Club. Um, and um, they, uh, Belmont Country Club doesn't really have a great constituency here <laughs> in Belmont. And most of their club members uh, live outside the town. 
the person who is who who brought up this uh, petition uh, said that he had to stop getting signatures because everybody wanted to sign it. And what, what this would do is it would take that seventy five percent exemption on your on on the property tax on the uh, open land and just and then take it away and then it would come to the town. But this is a this is not as simply as the vote being taken and then it start. It, it, then you get that 75%, you know, to the town. Uh, it, it has to go to the legislature. Now, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who say this is just wishful thinking, you know, this legislature will never do this. But what's happening is that a lot of other towns, such as Newton, which has three clubs that use this exemption, have become very interested in this and they may support their own or support that legislation in Belmont because then that would lead to other towns getting that same exemption. It, this could be actually a very forward-thinking um, um, uh, uh, town meeting uh, vote um, uh, for, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, do you really need to have country clubs to have, you know, that, you know, that break? All right. So we, we expect it to pass. It's, it's not necessarily a slam dunk with the legislature, but there are other communities interested who will also be lobbying the legislature, um, we expect, um, um, related to the, the exemption in their communities. That's well. exactly right. Okay, so the probably the, the next most um, controversial um, article that would be coming up at, town, at special town meeting would be the Specialized Energy Code, Article 5. That's right. Uh, during the debate, it, well, it wasn't really a debate. It was just a discussion between the select board members and and the town discussing uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this str- uh, basically it's a stretch code on steroids, um, <laughs> which would would you know really lead the town to have more electrified houses, especially new construction would just be basically be you know electrified. There, there, there's some discussion whether this is a a good thing to do because the state is already moving in that direction why should belmont you know be in front when other towns that have gone through this who voted for this are finding you know there's these it's it's very nuanced what what things can be done and nuance is is the word that uh, patrice garvin our town administrator is using in terms of this you know so it could be um it could be a situation where the select board says you know think about whether this vote is necessary. Um, I, I know the Energy Committee is, has been, you know, clamoring for this vote. I mean, they, they had it in the uh, the annual town meeting, and then the, that was pulled, you know, basically to, so people could, could you know, look at the, uh, at the, at the uh, amendment, uh, at the article a little closer and see what it really meant. Um, so it's going to be a, an interesting, um, um, uh, 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 an interesting article to hear from the Energy Committee and also hear from people who believe that maybe we're pushing a little too quickly. All right, um, is it worth talking about the um, Article Six um, involving restaurants? No. All right, we won't talk about that. Let's move <laughs> on to uh, to closings. Un- unfortunately. Trink Tish and the Craft Beer Cellar are closing. Uh, tell us more about that, Franklin. Yeah, well, we knew that this was happening. the the uh, the uh, the two the, the the two owners of of the um uh, of the uh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we already knew that this was coming. Uh, the two owners uh, said that they were looking at a life change. You know, this is uh, they've been doing this for 13 years. You know, uh, with the uh, the beer uh, the the, the um, craft beer cellar. You know, when it was when it was their only business, and then they they bring uh, they brought uh, Trinkish to town, and that has been a, a, a monumental success. Uh, but it, it was just a little too much, you know, 13 years out without a vacation, 13 years without doing anything else, but doing this every day. They just wanted to step back. So they put up the uh, restaurant and the uh, craft beer cellar um, uh, stores and restaurant up for sale. The, the uh, store was going to go for was a proposed for a million dollars, which didn't seem like that bad of a price when you consider how popular it is among beer uh uh, aficionados uh, around this area, but they just could never find a buyer. So uh, unfortunately, both of those uh, establishments are going to close on uh, December 31st. And that's a real shame. And it really is a shame because it, it also uh, puts another uh, storefront, especially in the back end of, of uh, Leonard Street, um, uh, you know, closed and empty. So 
this is a, 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 a should be a real hit to everybody who who wants to see business come to Belmont. It's uh, it's just a it's just a, a bad way to end the year. I should say. All right, so um, you can still enjoy both Trinktish and uh, the, the the craft beer cellar until the end of the year. Is that right, that, Franklin? That's correct. You're the only place you can get your Anchor Steam beer is there. So um, I'm I'm at a loss. Okay. Um, next up, let's talk about um, where things where things are going with uh, the um, the the rezoning taking place because of MBTA. It is moving forward, to say the least. The MBTA, uh, the state, uh, has basically said that uh, if, if you have a community where you have an MBTA station, uh, a commuter rail station, uh, you know, big bus stops, um, you should have more housing there because it really makes a lot of sense. You know, people will then, you know, go from their homes to, to and, and take public transportation. It's just a smart way of looking at it. But, but you know, uh, what's happening is that... Um, you know, it, it's it's moving forward. It's uh, it's you know they have, uh, you know, uh, in Belmont they have a number that they want to see. You know, uh, the, the well the state wants to see like a thousand six hundred uh, units proposed. That doesn't mean it's going to happen. They're just going to propose it. But there's uh, but if you look at uh, the maps that they've already produced, it looks like Waverly, Belmont Center, maybe a little bit of Cushing, uh, are going to be. That's where the, the zoning changes are going to be concentrated. And there's a lot of people who live in those areas who are uh, a little apprehensive about, you know, seeing their single family homes, you know, uh, become a place where, you know, uh, uh, triple deckers, maybe, you know, a, a small apartment buildings are going to be placed. So there's a lot of worry. Now, what, what the town is saying is attend these meetings, you know, just don't be on the, you know, just don't listen to us talk about it, attend the meetings and see exactly what, is being proposed in your area and then be part of the change. You know, it's coming, you know, the state is requiring it. So let's see what, uh, um, and, and, and the town is saying, be involved. So be involved. All right. Thank you, Franklin. Let, let's talk about pennies and pumpkins. It's a great annual event. What it is, is a, uh, uh it happens at town uh, hall. It, it happens at, uh, uh, town hall in the parking lot. And you basically bring your old pumpkins that are wilting away and being eaten by squirrels, um, and and take those to there to to the town hall on Saturday between eleven and one, and they will then um, uh, chuck them into a compost uh, uh, and you know fill a truck full of these uh, pumpkins and then then they'll go to a compost pile. But it's also a way, and this is being done by uh, um, uh, Belmont. Uh, Belmont Helps? Belmont Helps, that's right. Uh, it's being done by Belmont Helps. This is the fourth or fifth um, anniversary. And what you do also is bring your pennies. Bring your pennies or, or any kind of do donation. You know, they'll take dollar bills. Um, and it helps um, uh, hel helps feed the poor or helps, uh, helps uh, people who are in need of uh, food uh, uh, and uh, helps them uh, in, by uh, taking those pennies and uh, buying um, um, uh, food for them. All right, Franklin. Um, let's talk about um, uh, the um, the Apple Run. I understand it was a great success. It was a fantastic day. It was it was it was a little cool. <laughs> it was in, in the fifties, uh, and it started to rain at the very end. Uh, but what what happened is that uh, this is the, the the foundation for Belmont Education. This is their Apple Run, and this year is it, it changed its course, so it's less hilly, and it also. Um, uh, made a, uh, a change in that it was closer to Halloween. So there are a lot of great costumes. Uh, the, the best costume was won by a person from Arlington who uh, put his son in a, in his, you know, stroller, running stroller, and, and made it out look like an MBTA truck, you know. So it was great. It was fantastic. Uh, but the most important part is that uh, between twenty five dollars and $30,000 was raised uh, by this annual event, and that will be going to helping teachers learn, new, you know, how to use technology in a better way. It's a, it goes back to where Dan Sharfman, who was a, a member of the, of the school committee, uh, and his efforts to do that. So it's a great, it's a great, it's a great thing that we're, uh, that's still going on. Okay. Um, how about a sports update, Franklin? Well, uh, Belmont's 
uh, best team <laughs> is uh, playing tonight, and that's uh, Belmont uh, uh, Volleyball. They'll start against Lincoln Sudbury on Friday. And just after the game, we'll all go outside in the 30-degree uh, weather and watch boys soccer. And they're, they're playing, I believe, Peabody or Medford uh, in a play-in game. Uh, yesterday, uh, the uh, uh, girls, uh, well, field hockey, uh, set out against a co-ed team from uh, 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 Durfee, which is basically the, the Fall River uh, High School. And, um, and, and, and they just demolished the, the, uh, the Hilltoppers, uh, seven, nothing. It was a complete, it, the Belmont was just running, running rampant over, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the team from the, uh, South shore. And, um, uh, they now move on to a, a sweet 16, uh, 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 battle with, uh, central Catholic and that's on Tuesday. Uh, girls soccer is going to be on Monday. Unfortunately, we can't. Not many people will go there because we have town meeting. Uh, that's going to be in Weymouth. Um, and um, what's the other one? Hmm. Oh, football. How could I forget that? Football is playing uh, uh, Wellesley um, on Saturday at 1 o'clock in Wellesley. Uh, they're in the playoffs for the first time in many years. Um, so, and you know, this could be a good matchup. You know, two upscale towns. <laughs> All right, Frank. Well, well, thank you. And you can find more of Franklin's reporting at belmontonian.com. Be sure to tune in next time, and we will see you then.